Hello and welcome to Friday Art Club. So lovely to have you here. My name is Kate Field and I have been a teacher of art and design for a very long time. In this little lesson on this Friday, we're going to be continuing how to prepare your sketchbook. And one of the things that I get my students to do with their brand new sketchbook and their clean white pages is to give them a bit of a trashing. And that's what we're going to do. So in the last video, I was tearing up some of the pages and then putting some acrylic paint with a sponge. If you want to check that one out, go and have a look at that one. And in this one, I'm going to give you five different techniques to prepare the backgrounds for your sketchbook. You ready? Let's get going. In this lesson, I'm going to show you five different ways to create interesting backgrounds in your sketchbooks using all, just stuff that you've got lying around. So cling film, sort of some sponges, a bit of bubble wrap, tissue, a little spongy thing, some masking tape and a rag. And we're going to be using different types of paint, ready mix paint, acrylic paint and some watercolour paint as well. OK, so lesson one in this in this little little section is using acrylic paint. So in this first one, I'm using some acrylic paint and some ready mix. Think about the colours that you like because that's going to make, make it a happy experience. And I found this uh, shimmer, shimmer paint the other week. So uh, no idea what it's going to be like, actually. Oh, it's quite nice, isn't it? So I'll put that in my, on my paper plate. Just a plain sketchbook. And so last time we looked at um, trashing some pages. So here we have, you can trash it first if you want, that's absolutely fine. I always work on a double page. I find it really helps when you're kind of wanting to create something and to try something new. So I'm just going to mix that with a bit of, bit of blue there. And then we're just going to scrape that across the surface of the paper. Quite liking that. Let's uh, put that there. I'm just going to add a bit of white to this. The idea of using this sort of paint for background is that once it's dry, you can paint over the top of it and it won't smudge or run or anything like that which is uh, which is really good I'm having this sort of quite intense because I quite like it now if you kind of think nah it's just too it's too dark now it's just too dark that's fine you can just put some white over the top <laughs> the whole point of a sketchbook is you're trying things out you're um, playing and seeing what happens and seeing the things that you like and, and maybe the things that you don't like. So what I'm going to do now, I've got this nice kind of blue, blue effect. I'm just going to add a little bit. And this is just the ready mix. So it's not going to be very intense in the colour. Um, ready mix paint is very inexpensive, which means it's great for playing. <laughs> it really is. Because it uh, you can pick it up in the supermarket. So I'm going to leave that one to dry and we'll go on to the next one. So the next one is going to be using acrylic paint again, still with a sponge, but this time I'm going to use a stencil. Now these are ones that I have bought and I've, as you can see from this one, I've used it a lot. I really like it actually. I mean, I like this one as well. But you can pick them up um, in various places. I will put a, a link below. So with a stencil, again, keeping it dry, a, a dry sponge, just sort of dabbing 
dabbing a little bit, holding it down. You can tape it down as well if you if you want to, if you feel it's moving around too much. But I'm just going to put that there. We'll lift that up. That's interesting, isn't it? That's really quite interesting. Let's just put a little bit more on there. Going over to this side as well. I'm not taking too much care here. You don't have to. Just playing, which I stress all the time. So this is this this is quite interesting. I'm just going to do some edges here, just brushing the edge, and I might just keep this blue. And when it dries, which we'll we will look at at the end when we look at all of them and think about what you could do some thoughts of what you might do with this will come to you so for me it's it's looking a bit urban I'm thinking maybe a bit of an urban landscape um is going to appear here okay let's go on to the next one okay so I've put some masking tape on here with sponge and this time I'm going to do a more sort of greeny greeny blue and I'm just dabbing over the top. Again, the paint is quite dry. It's not too wet, but you could try different things and see see what happens. This sort of dabbing technique will give texture, but you can scrape it as well and see what happens there. Now straight away I've kind of I'm getting a bit of an organic feel to this so I think it might be something that uh, perhaps I'll do some sort of organic feel maybe some plants or trees or something like that so I'm just sort of covering it with these colours and obviously you can use whatever colours you want just sort of putting putting that in like this covering the page so that's the second stage the next stage is we're going to start to remove the masking tape now you can keep the masking tape. I am just going to put it down here because I might use that. Well, I will use it. I know I will for something else. So I'm going to be removing the masking tape. And obviously uh, where the tape was is the white page. And that's going to create a pattern that, uh, might, again, give you some ideas of, of what you might do. So I'm kind of thinking country walks along the lanes near to where I live. I think I might do something like that with this. And then perhaps a few trees and sort of exploring a bit of wildlife. I think that could be, that could be quite fun. All right, so we will come back to that one we've left it to dry. Let's move that there so you can see. In this next one I'm going to be using stampers. Now these are ones that I've made myself using those little um, spongy foam pads that are used to protect furniture. No, protect the floor from furniture. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and they're great so I've just stuck them onto a bit of cardboard and I'm going to be using acrylic paint again. I'm going to be using my sponge and Maybe I think I might use a brush to put the paint on. We might just kind of see see how it goes. I'm just going to use a bit of. Uh, I'm going to use the brush first of all on here. And obviously, you can put the stamp down onto the paint as well. Just play with it. See see what happens. 
Again, it's always a little bit hit and miss. We're never quite sure what's uh, going to happen. Oh, that's a bit of a weird colour. Something got caught up in that one, but that's fine. Again, you are playing. We are playing all the time. Let's just put that down on. Oh, now that's quite interesting. Always do two or three. Let's see. Hmm, that's. Yeah, that's quite curious. I'm not quite sure about that, but we'll see where this goes. Quite liking some of this. Push that one on there. Again, I'm going over the double page. It's just a interesting pattern formation here. Right, I'm going to have a go with this one. I think I might do this one with uh, some more pink and yellow. Again, this is the poster paint, so it's very thin. So you're not going to get kind of a really great impression, but that's absolutely fine. It's not what I want. Quite liking this. And so this page is sort of more intense than this one. I might just leave that. Leave that and see where we go with it. So we'll leave that one to dry and come back to it. We're now going to move on to working with watercolours. I use a whole variety of watercolours. You use whatever, whatever you have. And again, it doesn't have to be expensive. I like these ones. These are um, Anna Linky and they're very intense colours. And some of these, actually, these are rather lovely. Um, but you can use tubes, um, whatever. OK, so let's just move those. I'm just going to spray, spray a bit of water in here. And I'm going to spray some water onto the page. And I'm going to use a very soft brush. And again, I think I'm going to go for greens. Let's... Uh, just lay some paint down. So it would be very wet. So we go right across the page. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that uh, more viridian green. And the paint will start reacting with the water immediately. Now, most people, <laughs> when I start teaching a kind of watercolour washes, they labour it too much. You've got to be very gentle, otherwise you destroy the paper. And then you can just leave it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, because I think it's really interesting. It's it, There's sort of some movement there and, and I really like it. Once it's dry, again, it's watercolour. So as soon as you add water to the page, things will change. It's not like acrylic. With acrylic, once it's dry, it's dry. Um, but that can then be used to our advantage with watercolour. And you can you can move the book around and change the shapes and the patterns but you play with play with water wet on wet it's called and it's such a lovely freeing um, experimentation and I love it so on this one we're using watercolor again I'm going to make the, the page wet this time just with the brush or you could use the spray that's absolutely fine and this time I'm going to use one of my absolute favourite colours, this sort of turquoise. You see, just let the uh, the paint bleed through the water. And then the idea is you really do need to work quickly. So we're just going to use the tissue paper. Um, tissue, this is just a tissue. To... Uh, take up some of the water but also what happens is that the tissue itself creates a pattern. Now it's this technique that I use when I'm doing watercolour seascapes 
I will use use a tissue. Now on this same page, so I just think it might be quite fun to show you here. Again, I'm going to put my, just sticking to this turquoise at the moment, and then I'm going to add a darker blue. You can see that the, the colours just disperses, which is just lovely. And then some cling film. I always get in a bit of a mess with cling film. Scrunch it up a little bit. So we're just going to lay it on top. like this so you can see some of the patterns there I'm just going to lift lift that up a little bit and see how that kind of disperses it a little bit more and then I'm just going to put that back down bring it back up I'm just using the cling film to create different sorts of patterns on the paper. And again, just play with it and see what happens. I like these sort of bubbles that are, are appearing. Quite liking those. That's uh, looking quite fun, isn't it? Quite liking that. A bit of surf coming up. And when that drives, dries, I might then just sort of work into a little bit with um, maybe a colouring pencil or acrylic pen or something like that. So here are those pages now dry. I do let them dry for a few hours, even overnight. This one's the acrylic one, it's totally dry. You can now put all sorts of stuff onto here, including wet paint, and it won't move. So uh, it's quite nice, I'm liking this. I will work on this in a later lesson. Okay, let's so uh, to the stencil page. Again, we used acrylic here, so this is all completely dry. You'll be able to put wet on this and it won't move about. Okay, I'm really liking this one. Again, we used acrylic, so you can put paint on the top of that without changing the background at all. This one, I'm, I'm quite liking this one. I'm, I'm imagining a bit of a collage uh, experiment on this so I will work on that one a little bit later and okay and this one was the watercolour now this is not fixed so if you want to add more background you could you could add water onto this add more paint move move the paint around and it will it will change if you want to leave it like it is and you want to then work on it you need to be careful so you could use um, acrylic pens, that would work. But as soon as you add water to this, it's going to change the background. So you'll need to think about what you want to do that um, with that. If you want to um, ha fix this, then you can use a gel medium or PVA glue, white glue, mixed with water over the top, leave it to dry, and then it will be fixed. And we will try some of those in the next few lessons. And finally, this one, which I think is my favorite. I am really liking this. Again, this is watercolor. So if you add water to this, the colors will disperse. Um, so that might be what you want, which is fine. I'm thinking I need to fix this. So I'm going to use a gel medium to work over the top of it. And uh, in a future lesson, I'll show you what I end up doing with this one. So I really hope you have enjoyed these experiments. So I hope you can join me next time. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like this sort of thing, perhaps you'd like to subscribe. 
my plan is to have a lesson every Friday and you can uh, follow along. And I'm also on Instagram at the Cape Field Artist. So uh, perhaps we can have a chat over there as well. Thank you so much. See you next time.